Hello, my name is Stefan. I'm a PM on the Remote Desktop Services team, and today I want to show you how you can use the Create uh, Session Host Pool template to provision your own session host pool as part of the Windows Virtual Desktop uh, service. I have walked into the Azure portal, and from here I'm going to navigate to the marketplace. Once in the marketplace, I'm going to be looking for Windows virtual desktop and once here I will select the Windows virtual desktop provision host pooled staged ARM template that's published by Microsoft and is in the category compute uh, down here I'm gonna select create and that will walk me into the flow that allows me to create my session host pool uh, the very first step will be to uh, create our uh, to select our host pool name. Uh, this can be any name uh, that makes sense to you. In my case, I would like to use a predefined name that I've already selected. In this case, is the Windows 10 multi session hosts. Uh, I'm not going to be using a personal desktop. Uh, I'm going to be used a using a pooling environment. Um, uh, when it comes to the region. Uh, currently, for the public preview, we are only available in East US 2. I have my subscription, and then in the field resource group, I'm going to be creating a new resource group. I'm going to call that one Demo Hosts Desktops. I'm actually going to abbreviate it a little bit. Select OK. Um, then the next option is the location of the session host. So a session host can be provisioned in any of the Azure regions, as you can see in the drop down. Um, since the service is running in East US 2, we do recommend keeping the session hosts in a location that is close to that region. And when we say close, what we mean is that the latency between the location where the host pools are provisioned and the uh, Windows Virtual Desktop region is less than. 150 milliseconds. Um, another part of the decision why I'm selecting the West US 2 is that that is where uh, my domain controller is, and my domain controller um, will have impact on the performance, so I want to be close to that one. So I'll select OK. Then here we provide you with a very simple flow that allows you to uh, calculate easily how many VMs you need for the users that you have. In my situation, I have about 20 users, uh, medium workload, um, and it says you need one standard VM. Uh, I do, however, would like to use a different type of VM, so I'm going to override that selection. And the next phase is selecting the prefix. Um, so. Uh, the prefix is something that will be added to the name of the VMs, so they are easily distinguishable. Um, so what we want to select here is desktop. Um, the recommendation here is to keep that field under 10 characters, as we do like to, as uh, the ARM template actually adds a dash uh, followed by two digits. So keep it under 15 characters total. So this way you don't uh, get into any net bias issues later on. Go select OK. Uh, now, when it comes to the image, this will be the image that I'm using for the operating system of the VM. In my scenario, I already have downloaded the Windows 10 multi-session image. I have prepared it by installing certain applications that are needed for my uh, workload. And I have uploaded that image into Azure. You have, of course, the option to use an image from the gallery. Uh, right now, uh, for this preview, we have uh, Windows Server 2016, but we will be adding those as, uh, very soon. I'm going to go and have to figure out what's my image URI. So the way you can do this is you come to the Azure portal. You start and looking for all services, storage accounts. And here I have two storage accounts. I'm going to obviously use the one that it's Windows 10 images. How do I know? Is That's where I uploaded my image. 
here I'm going to select bulbs under bulbs I'm selecting the container and here you can see that I have actually two images one is from November one is from December I'm going to use the later one I'm going to copy the URL and that is the value that I'm going to use for the image URI the next step is asking me for the type of this drive that I want to have on my VMs. I'm going to opt for the solid state. Then the next option is asking me for my domain UPN. This is an account that has permissions to join VMs to the existing domain that I'm going to point. Then I'm going to specify the password. It's very important to type the right password. And then we have the option to specify the domain to join and the OU path. I don't have any preferences for those. Uh, I'm not going to be using managed disks. Sorry, I will be using managed disks. And then the final thing is selecting the VNet. In this case, my VNet will be the one where my Active Directory domain controller is hosted select that one and then I'm going to select the subnet so I selected the subnet uh, it's complaining about the password it does not meet the complexity okay well I need to be able to type my password correctly so let's give it one more try Okay, that seemed to work. I'm going to say OK. OK, and I'm going to move to the section that allows me to specify the tenant group and name and all the details that are tied to my Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Um, so I'm going to start here by providing the tenant group. Uh, the tenant group has been created for me when I was creating the tenant. That's part of the onboarding. For, for most of you, it will be the default tenant group. In certain scenarios, it might be different, and you will know when you fall in one of those scenarios. So my tenant group is a Microsoft internal. My tenant name is wvdint. Um, when it comes to the authentication, I'm going to use a user uh, not a service principle. Uh, the service principle is recommended, but for this demo, I'm going to use a plain user. Now, the next section here is uh, asking me to enter the, uh, my user, and that one will be this gentleman. And then I need to confirm the password twice. Uh, and the password one more time. select OK here. Now at this screen what is happening is Azure is validating my input, making sure everything seems correct and you can see validation passed. I'm gonna select OK. This will display the terms of use. I'm gonna give it a quick read and I'm gonna select create and you can see up here deployment has started so I'm gonna give it some time and come back to this and just for those of us that are a little bit more curious um, I clicked on the deployment and you can see here the progress as it is going and just in case if I need to verify my inputs I can come into the input section you can see all my details and the outputs nothing yet because it's being deployed I'll go back to the overview section and I will resume this video in, in about 10 minutes once my VMs have been provisioned. And at that point, um, once they're provisioned, we'll take a look at what's next.